So it would seem some of you want me to respond to Emma Watson's unspeech, which I will now do. So grab some popcorn, this could be a little lengthy. Good morning. Your Excellencies, UN Secretary General, President of the General Assembly, Executive Director of UN Women, and distinguished guests. Today, we are launching a campaign called He for She. You know, when I first heard the name of this campaign, I thought it was something entirely different. Boy, was I surprised. I mean, girl, was I surprised. I am reaching out to you because we need your help. I'm sorry, Emma. I don't think you, I don't think you can afford me. Although, I'll leave my Patreon and PayPal information below if you'd like to try to persuade me that I'm wrong on that. We want to end gender inequality. And to do this, we need everyone involved. This is the first campaign of its kind at the UN. Lucky us. We want to try and galvanize as many men and boys as possible to be advocates for change. Curiously enough, if you really were interested in getting the uh, support of men and boys, you wouldn't go around telling them to stop being men and to stop being boys. You would probably just accept them for who they are and try to find a way to work cooperatively, cooperatively with them. But you won't do that now, will you? So, sorry. And we don't just want to talk about it. <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight. <laughs> There's a problem, and you don't want to just talk about it, so you went to the United Nations. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me know how that works out. We want to try and make sure that it's tangible. Tangible change. Like what panhandlers seek on the streets. Most of whom happen to be men. Just FYI. I was appointed as Goodwill Ambassador for UN Women six months ago. That reminds me. I really need to have a talk with the UN's uh, sorting hat. That thing has lost its fucking mind. And the more I've spoken about feminism, the more <laughs> I have realized that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. No, no, no. Fighting for women's rights is not synony synonymous with man-hating. Being a feminist is synonymous with man-hating. I see that I see you've confused the one for the other, and that's a mistake on your part. Don't do that anymore. If there is one thing I know for certain... Then you will know one more thing that I'm giving you credit for knowing. That's all I can say. So, lay this one thing that you know for certain on me. It is that this has to stop. Yes, feminists need to stop being man-haters. For the record, feminism, by definition, is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. Suppose uh, we go back a little bit in time and I decide to make the following argument. By definition, the word nigger just means an uncivilized person of lower class type origins. Nothing whatever to do with being black. And then I'm in the midst of some black people and I say, hey niggers. And then one of them gets upset, and, I, and I'm like, hey, 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 by definition, nigger does not mean, it is not a derisive term for black people. It just means uneducated, slovenly, lower class people. Do you think that's going to work? Do you think that would be a, a good shield against the ass kicking that I'm probably going to be getting very soon? No. And that's because you don't get to go around playing the definition game when everybody understands how the word is actually used, how the people who operate under a given label actually operate. We understand how feminists operate. All you have to do is watch them and listen to them argue. Yet you want to run around and go, but the definition... Shut up. It is the theory of the political... It's only a theory! Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Economic and social equality of the sexes. For those who might be wondering, there's another definition of feminism in the dictionary itself that's uh, is perfectly serviceable and indeed is actually a model of how they operate, and that is the advancement of women's rights and interests. Nothing in there about equality. It's just the, the gaining of more and more and more rights and privileges and whatever subsequent to the interests of women, which is precisely how feminism, this cult, uh, with all of its dogmas and, and doctrines, operates. 
I started questioning gender-based assumptions a long time ago. When I was eight. Oh my, weren't you a preco precocious little shit? Hey, how did you get picked to play a precocious little shit in a movie? <gasps> you weren't even acting, were you? I was confused at being called bossy. <clears throat> because I wanted to direct the plays that we would put on for our parents. But the boys were not. When at 14, I started to be sexualized by certain elements of the media. When I was 14, I was being sexualized by some people too, and I thoroughly enjoyed every second of it. Getting laid left, right, and center was awesome! In fact, it still is awesome! But, you know, there's a difference between men and women. You, people like you, run around whining and complaining that someone might find you attractive and want to fuck you, and people like me go, hey, cool, I'm gonna get laid some more. Slight difference between how men and women think. What? Oh, and I'm not afraid to express how I think and feel about sex. I love it! Fifteen. My girlfriends started dropping out of their beloved sports teams because they didn't want to appear muscly. I've looked at a lot of female sports teams over the years, and uh, if they're any guide to what what's on the mind of your your girlfriends, they were they didn't have to worry about becoming too muscly. I can assure you, uh, the the reality we see in the world of people of women on sports teams is a rejection of the notion that it will make you muscly. Some small, teeny tiny subset of them will become muscly, but not not most of them. When at eighteen, my male friends were unable to express their feelings. How is it that you know that these men, these male friends of yours, were unable to express their feelings? Are you guessing, or did they tell you, thereby expressing their feelings to you? Men are perfectly free to express their feelings. The problem that you and all feminists, all female feminists in particular, have is that what you want men to be doing when they're expressing themselves is not what men want to be doing when they're expressing themselves. How you want men to express themselves is not how men want to express themselves. You want men to express themselves only so long as they do it in a way that suits you. That is to say that the closer they become to sounding like women, the happier you'll be. Guess what, madam? Uh, men aren't women, and most men don't want to be women. The men in your life who you will find, like, tailoring what it is they have to say in your presence, do it because they want to fuck you or because you're their friend and they're worried about your precious little fifis. I don't want to fuck you and I'm not your friend and you can shove your feelings right up your hoo-ha. I will express myself any damn well play, any damn uh, way I damn well please, and there's not fuck all that you can do to stop me and I don't care what your opinion is. I hope we're perfectly clear on that. I decided oh, did that you? I was a feminist. Oh, lucky us. And this seemed uncomplicated to me. But my recent research... Being wrong often feels like you're doing something uncomplicated. It's actually a good sign that what you're doing might well need a second look. Show me that feminism has become an unpopular word. It hasn't become an unpopular word. It has never been a, a popular word. In the history of the term, the overwhelming majority of, the world, uh, majority of women in the world have positively rejected accepting the label. It has never been particularly popular. Women are choosing not to identify as feminist. Yes, women today are doing exactly what women have always done uh, with respect to that word. Generally not accepting it. As it happens, you can agitate for equality without needing to have a special sexist label to do it. Apparently, I am among the ranks of women who are sexist. whose expressions are seen as too strong. <laughs> no, um, I, can, I can assure you when I uh, look and hear you talk, what I think of is not strength. It really is not what's there. Too aggressive. No. Isolating. Mm. And anti-men. Yes. So, you know, one out of four ain't half bad. <laughs> really, it's not. If you do the math there, it's not half bad. Although, I'll give you partial credit on the isolating. Uh, feminists do work very hard to keep themselves isolated, thereby 
having a self-fulfilling prophecy. We're being oppressed uh, because of the patriarchy, and we go around saying a whole bunch of stupid shit which they don't seem to notice, and that keeps us marginalized because oppression by the patriarchy. It's a big, big circle there. Unattractive, even. Um, I'm not one Why to judge. Why has the word become such an uncomfortable one? It hasn't become an uncomfortable one. It has always been an uncomfortable one. Suppose I wanted to create a system to call and call it a whiteism. And the, the central proposition of whiteism is going to be equality of the races, the blacks and the whites. And indeed, you know, we won't even call them niggers anymore. We'll just call them black people or people of color, whatever they want to hear. But our central proposition is that we want these two races to be equal in rights and opportunities. And that we need, uh, we need uh, to help this minority group, like men are a minority group, by the way, uh, women are a majority. There are more of you than there are men, which makes men a min minority, but whatever. But we want to help this other minority group, these black people. And in order to do it, we need to make them uh, seem to be as white as we can get them. And that's how we're going to help them. We won't take them on their own, own terms. No. They have to ad adapt their behavior to be like white people. And then I'm going to go around and complain that people seem to think that my, my brand new system of whiteism is racist. Do you know why they'll think that it's racist? For the same reason that people think Bozo is a clown and that you are an unlettered nitwit. Because it's true in all those cases. I just knew I had to help you along there. I am from Britain. Oh. And I think it is right that I am paid the same as my male counterparts. I think that it is right that I'm rich. I'd like to see you paid as much as uh, men of your age typically are paid. I don't think you would like that change in your circumstances, but, you know, okay. I think it is right. You know, you could just put one million in the bank and live off of the interest and live better than most of the people in the history of the world. In fact, almost all of them. That I should be able to make decisions about my own body. When it comes to your body, I assure you, I take a very hands-off approach. Although that's not entirely true with my own. When I'm all alone in my room, Sometimes I take a very proactive, hands-on approach. I think... Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you did. I think it is right that women be involved on my behalf in the policies and the decisions that will affect... I'm a strong woman. Can you people please get together and do things on my behalf? Thank you. You know, if you were really going to be strong and aggressive and whatever, whatever, what you could do is actually go do all the stuff yourself. You said you wanted to do more than just talk about it, but apparently what you want to do is offer platitudes in front of people and then have other people go do shit on your behalf. I know that typically what happens when we're going to talk about empowering women, what that requires is men to get up and do it. And you'll give us a fine example of that in a little while, of how women just can't seem to manage to do this shit. But, uh, continue. My life. I think it is right that socially I am afforded the same respect as men. You are afforded greater respect than most men and most women. So stop calling greater equal. It isn't. Okay. But sadly, I can say that there is no sadly. one country in the world where all women can expect to receive these rights. No country in the world can yet say that they have achieved gender equality. That's true. Um, there are, I don't know why, I think it's because women are lazy. There are just not enough women trash men, or trash women, not trashy women. I have enough of those already. There aren't enough women working in, uh, in the coal mines. There aren't enough women uh, roughnecks. So, uh, I don't know why your sisters won't get off their asses and get down to the trenches and do these hard, manual labor type jobs, but apparently they won't be doing it. The number of male CEOs is dramatically too high. Oh, the number of uh, trash men? <laughs> that number's fine. <sighs> these rights... You know, by the way, we need some parity. We need some equality in the, uh, the workplace death toll. More women need to start dying in their jobs so they can become equal to what it is that men are doing. This, is, this, will help, this will help bring about the equality that you claim to want, equality between the sexes. So, uh, women, I don't know what it is about you out there that's keeping you from dying 
in your jobs. I think it's because you take the easy ones. But you need to stop that. You need Some of you need to sacrifice for your sisters, for the greater good. I consider to be human rights, but I am one of the lucky ones. My life is... Let me see. You, you consider women's rights and presumably men's rights to be human rights. Boy, that's avant-garde, considering humans to be humans and the rights of humans to be human rights. This is kind of like listening to that... Uh, that feminist vegetarian talking about how talking about the language about eating animals and how we call it a chicken leg <laughs> instead of a leg of a chicken. Uh, anyway, uh, Pony Slay Station has a nice video on that. I'll put a link to it below. Sheer privilege because my parents didn't love me less because I was born a daughter. To be fair, they didn't know you as well as we know you now. I mean, we've had a lot longer to get used to you, so... Now, I've, what parents go... Name some names of parents who go around doing this shit. My school did not limit me. Because I was a girl. No, but your education does seem to have limited you. <laughs> Sorry. My mentors didn't assume that I would go less far. Because I might give birth to a child one day. These influences with a gender equality. You know, I don't think that all these people when you were a little girl in school were actually want, you know, walking around wondering about your sex life in the future. Just call me crazy. Ambassadors. I don't know, is that a thing you do in England? Like, is it? if it is, you can let me know. I don't care. I don't live there. I'm, I'm perfectly safe. Need me who I am today. Lucky us. They may not know it, but they are the inadvertent feminists who are changing the world today. See, this is, uh, the people who don't identify as feminists or positively reject the label. You'll be defined to be feminists anyway, because... reasons. Need more of those. And if you still hate the word, it is not the word that is important. You have spent the last five minutes out of about an eleven and a half minute speech talking about the word. And then you say it's not important. Apparently it's about 45% important. It's the idea and the ambition behind it. Because not all women have received the Supremacy. same rights that oh, I have. Oh, so close. In you fact, got me. Statistically, statistically, very few have been. In 1997, Hillary Clinton made a famous speech in Beijing about women's rights. Did she? Sadly, men... You know, I don't actually know what she said there, so... Maybe we have a different definition of famous. Many of the things that she wanted to change are still true today. <laughs> I, I know. Um, did she want to change whether or not women or men are the greatest victims of war? I mean, because that hasn't changed any. What makes women the greatest victim of war, obviously, is they have to deal with the men being killed and blown up and you know, being crippled and whatnot. The, being blown up and crippled and whatnot, that doesn't make you a victim of war. If it does, it doesn't make you as much of a victim as a war as someone who is thousands of miles away from it, sitting around in, in a warm or cool, depending on the time of your house, with lots of food and water, clean water, I might add, and a social circle and things to do, and has to worry that you might get yourself killed. So I, I propose what we do is, women, uh, you really need to start, again, start pulling your weight, get your asses out there on the battlefield, and get killed a little more often, while the men sit back and become the real victims of war. You need to lessen your own victimhood by getting yourselves blown up in fucking wars. What stood out for me the most mm -hmm. was that less than 30% of the audience right. were male. Yes. How for those keeping track, that means about 70% or more than 70% of the audience were female. Effect change in the world when only half of it is invited or feel welcome to participate. Yes, how can we possibly go around changing things in the world if we don't get more men doing the work? Apparently, if you have a, 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 an issue you want to deal with and, and you have 70% women working on it, it just can't get done. What you need is to go get more men. You know, here's a conversation in history that, like, never, ever happened. Fellas, fellas, gather around, circle around, get off your donkey, come here. All right, listen up. Uh, we've got this goal, and as it turns out, we're not, going to be we're not going to be able to achieve it. 
we just have too many swinging dicks around here for us to be able to get this shit done. So what we need is about half of you to go away and women to take your place because reasons. That conversation has never, ever happened. And uh, we don't, you, you don't need women to get involved in certain things for men to get it done. And indeed, when you get women involved in it, it's deleterious to the getting done of that thing. Now, I want to know why it is that when you get a whole bunch of women together, you can't get the shit done that you want done. What is it that makes you not capable of doing that? Now, I happen to know some actual strong women, and they don't have this problem, but people like you do. In the conversation. Men. Uh, um, it, I don't know that I feel unwelcome in the conversation. I just don't have any interest in listening to women walk around, these harpies walking around screeching about the horrible, the parade of horribles that are men. I guess maybe that would make some people feel unwelcome, but I don't need to feel welcome to participate in a conversation. I just don't have any interest in hearing it. There is not an intelligent word that has ever been uttered by you people. You are not capable of, hey, wait a minute, that's why you can't get shit done. You're just all fucking retarded. I think I found the problem. I would like to take this opportunity oh, would you? to extend your formal invitation. Oh, <laughs> really? Uh, let me think about that. Dear Emma, Emma, I will be, be, I will be busy uh, doing other shit that's important that day. By the way, when is this? Lots of love, a guy. You guys like my response? Tear. Gender equality is your issue too. I know, it's about time women are taken down a peg and put on equal footing with us, but you know, I'm not much of a whiner, so I guess I won't complain about that too much. To date, I've seen my father's role as a parent being valued less by society, despite my needing his presence as a child as much as my mother's. Well, what you could have done is gotten your mother out of the house to have her go fucking work and your dad to stay home. You could have done that. Now, it's curious because I'm told simultaneously by feminists that um, the whole parenting thing is, is devalued because women are doing it and therefore it's not, worth, it's not considered being worth much. And now you're saying that your father's role in raising you isn't valued, but how, how can that be? If, if it's true that, the, that there's a lot of money in the world and it's going to some people and clearly a lot of it's going to you, and women aren't being paid their share, then that means that men have to be paying, being paid their share, which means that the work that men do is actually fucking valued and you're lying! Or the other feminists are lying. So which group of you are the liars? Do let me know. I've seen young men suffering from mental illness, unable to ask for help. Oh, it's not that they're unable to ask for help. It's just that all those slots and beds are taken to deal with women's problems. If you ever, if you want to get funding for something, all you have to do is say, uh, a, women, a woman's problem, women's problem, and that you'll get the funding that you want for it. Whereas if you're a man, that doesn't happen. So... What you could do is you could get some of your sisters uh, who don't actually require these services but who are just overly emotional and like to whine and complain to stop doing that and then there would be beds open for the men. Fear it would make them less of a man. Really? The, so the mentally ill people are telling you this and you just believe them? I mean, they're crazy, you know. Less of a man. In fact, in the UK, oh, suicide facts. is the biggest killer of men. Between 20 to 49. Do you know why that is? They're tired of listening to people like you and they're like, you know, I, I, suicide, it is an option. Eclipsing. It's the same reason that men die before their wives. They want to. Good accident. Like, I had 60 years of your bitching, lady. <laughs> and they check out. That's, men aren't posturing when they say, no, no, no. No, it's okay. Don't call an ambulance. I don't need it. They really mean, don't try to save my life. I want out. Please, just let me go. Stop torturing me, devil. Cancer and coronary heart disease. I've seen men made fragile and insecure by a distorted sense of what constitutes male success. Uh, distorted. Who the fuck are you to talk about what is and what isn't male success? Um, so let me get this straight. Some men are left feeling fragile and insecure 
because they're not able to compete <laughs> as well as people who are better at competing than they are. Okay, that sounds sounds reasonable, I guess. Uh, I don't know why you'd feel insecure about it. You can't compete as well as some people. You'll compete better than some others in a different field. Go do that other thing, but okay. Men don't have the benefits of equality either. We don't often talk about men being imprisoned by gender stereotypes. Oh, there's a reason we don't often talk about that, because it's not true. But I can see that they... This is like saying, or like hearing from a person who's having a hallucination and describing what they're seeing. Yes, yes, because there's a defect in your brain or some chemical that's influencing you. You're seeing that. However, the fact that you're seeing it doesn't mean the thing that you believe you're seeing is actually there. It's just a hallucination. Men, men aren't imprisoned by gender stereotypes. We have gender stereotypes, gender. We have sex stereotypes because they are representative of the way that the people in the two sexes ordinarily operate. And there's a reason that they operate that way. We come, we are a sexually dimorphic species that requires men and women to fuck occasionally to perpetuate the species. And over thousands of generations in our ancestral past, certain behaviors were built into us. And those are the ones that we see today. The behavior that you see generally for men is the precise behavior that men want to have because that's what's comfortable for men. And just as importantly, it's precisely what women want men to be like. And women are the way that they are because it's how they're generally comfortable and it's precisely because it's how it's what men like about them. It's what they like them to be like. That is what gives rise to this. It's not that someone sat down one day and go, hey, 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 hey. Gather around, people. Same group from earlier. Uh, get off your donkey. All right, I've got a great idea. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, gender stereotypes are set. Now, go forth and enforce these. You don't need to do it. You see the actions that you see because that's how people operate. Stereotypes arise because of generally observable behaviors about the group modeled by the stereotype. You oh. I return your attention to your being an idiot. And that when they are free, things will change for women as a natural consequence. I am perfectly free to be how I want to be. I don't require the permission of any woman for that. And it's curious here that you're talking about and when we're free to behave the way that we want or to express ourselves the way that we want, that you think that means that we'll want to express our ways the way that, uh, express ourselves the way that you want us to. Madam, stop thinking with your pussy. You fundamentally haven't the faintest fucking clue what men are like. You don't have the remotest idea what it means to be a man and to feel the things that men feel and to express themselves in the way that is consistent with what it is that they're feeling. You don't have any idea what this is about. And yet here you are claiming that if only we were freed from the thing that's not oppressing us, that you think is oppressing us, we would change and become practically identical to women in that we would be emotional people. And the only significant distinction left is that we'd still pee standing up. But I'm sure that'll be what you tackle next. Oh, God, that visual there. If men don't have to be aggressive... Oh, and I like this, that, that if we do all this, it'll be advantageous for women by apparently making most of men who exist now magically unattractive to women. And are you trying to make women lesbians? Is that what'll make, is that what'll make them happier? I don't know. In order to be accepted... Women won't feel compelled to be submissive. They're not. If men don't have to control... We don't. Women won't have to be controlled. <laughs> they don't. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Yes, I feel free to be sensitive. I don't have any interest in being sensitive. I'm not a woman. I don't walk around wondering about how my vagina relates to the whole fucking universe and why it's not all worshipping my pussy. I'm not a chick. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. <laughs> well, anytime you'd like to start, knock yourself out. I, I do uh, feel like I, I, I can go around and be strong, and as it happens, I do exactly that. It is time that we all perceive gender on a spectrum instead of two sets of opposing ideals. Consistent with what I was describing earlier about how these things came about, when you say opposing ideals, what you mean is complementary. That these two states of affairs complement one another. If, oh. 
It's an unapplause. Lucky me. If we stop defining each other by what we are not, and start defining ourselves by who we are... But you want men to define themselves by not being men. You want to... <laughs> <laughs> and in addition to that, you want to start defining themselves by adopting all these feminine traits that you find so important that men generally don't. We can all be free. Again, uh, the guys who go around telling you this shit do it for a couple of reasons. They're your friends, they want to get along with you, or they want to fuck you. It's not because they're, they're representing what men truly want underneath it all. And this is what he, she, is about. He, <laughs> she. <laughs> it's about freedom. The f I want men to take up this mantle. The freedom to do the work for Emma Watson. Oh boy, I love being free. Lucky me. That their daughters, sisters, and mothers can be free from prejudice. Also, so that their sons have permission to be vulnerable and human too. Uh, as it happens, I don't require your fucking permission to be human. I was born that way. Um, not, to go, not to go Lady Gaga here, but I was born that way, uh, you fucking nitwit. And permission to be vulnerable? I don't... I, I appreciate your granting me permission to be something that I don't want to be. It is exactly useless. As it happens, I am vulnerable in some senses because I'm human and mortal and something, something eventually is going to kill me. But as far as my emotional state, my disposition, I have no interest at all in walking around being vulnerable. That is to say, walking around being a goddamn whiner and crying about everything. Oh, what was me? What was me? There's an injustice here, an injustice there. Oh, oh, oh. Shut up. Again, I'm a man, not a woman. Reclaim those parts of themselves they abandoned. And I haven't lost any of my parts, except shortly after I was born. Uh... Actually, that's not entirely sure I've lost other parts. But with respect to what you're talking about, I'm not missing anything. I didn't lose anything. This is just how guys are. We're not forced to be this way by anyone. It's just how we are. In doing so, be a more true and complete version of them. I can be more true and complete if only I pretend that I'm what Emma Watson imagines I am, rather than being exactly what I am. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. You can shove that right up your, uh, your he for she. You can stick it in your he, or you can stick it in your she. You might be thinking, who is this Harry Potter girl? And no, I, I know who you are. I don't want any autographs, though. What is she doing speaking at the UN? And it's a really good question. I've been asking myself the same thing. <laughs> so All I, I know is that I care about this problem, and I want to make it better. Again, just because you see a problem, just because you're hallucinating, doesn't mean that there's a problem that's there. And having seen what I've seen, imagine what you've imagined. It a chance, I feel it is my responsibility to say something. Edmund. You would think that if, that in that responsibility you feel to say something, that what you would say, you would further feel the obligation to say something intelligent. I'm still waiting for that, by the way. Said, all that is needed for the forces of evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. Did he really say men and women? In my nervousness for this speech. A sign of strength. And in my moments of doubt, I've told myself... Sign of aggression? If not me, who? <laughs> well, obviously, the men. Duh, you've already solved this. If not me, and it won't be me, then who? I know all those poor guys in the world. They should band together and get this shit done. Because if you put a bunch of screeching harpies on a job, it won't fucking get finished. If Fortunately, there's no work here to be done, so... They, the poor guys, you lucked out. You don't have an additional duty here. You're welcome. Now, when? If you have similar doubts, when... I don't, because I'm a man. ...opportunities are presented to you. I hope that those words will be helpful. You know what, let me write that shit down. That could come in very useful in the future. If not me... Who... If not now, when? All right, I'll keep those right here on the on 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 my pad here, my notepad, 
So if in the future, like, my, inter my intellectual faculties completely fail me, I'll have those as a fallback. Because the reality is that if we do nothing, it will take 75 years, <laughs> or for me to be nearly 100, before... Let me see if I understand this. If we do nothing, then stuff will still happen. So apparently it's happening quite without you. Women so that's an answer to your question, if not me, who? Well, apparently you have an answer. Other people in the world are doing it. At least on your telling. Expect to be paid the same as men. For the same work. I would love to see women get paid the same uh, amount of money for the same work. Notice I did not say the same amount of time spent uh, toiling away on something. I said the actual amount of work. That would be a very interesting metric, don't you think? 15.5 million girls will be married in the next 16 years as children. Where, what do you mean? What do you mean by children? Like four-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 20-year-olds? It won't be until 2086 before all rural African girls can have a secondary education. Huh. Oh, well, I'll be dead by then, so I don't have to worry about it. If you believe in equality, you might be one of those inadvertent feminists. I can assure you, I, I am in no sense of the word a feminist. Indeed, I'm positively, I positively reject your toxic ideology. Absolutely reject it. Well, simultaneously being interested in equality. Funny how that works. And for this, I applaud you. We are struggling for a uniting word, but the good news... And <laughs> it won't be feminism, in the same way that uh, my racial equality group won't be called whiteism. ...is that we have a uniting movement. <clears throat> it is called He for She. <laughs> yeah, you can shove your I'm He up your She. I am inviting you to step forward, to be seen. And to ask yourself, if not me, who? Oh, hey, you were right. That could come in later. I was right here. Oh, my God. I was about to say that. If not Thank you, now, Spike. When? when? Thank you very, very much. More beautiful. Oh, my God. Did you hear those people giving her the clap? Maybe that was in response for her giving them the applause. Anyway, more beautiful words have never been spoken. All right, uh, Emma, I'm ready to serve uh, you, madam. So let me know what it is uh, I and, and my brothers can do to take care of you, little old you, and, and all of your personal emotional problems. Just give us a call and let us know, all right? Have a great day.